All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, this workshop is basically to teach about the very basics of HTML and CSS. Um, HTML has been around for a long time now. Uh, CSS, or Cascading Style Sheets, um, has been around also equally long. Um, both are two very powerful tools that you can use to make simple websites. Um, and I'm just going to go over some of the basics of making a website using HTML and then stylizing that using CSS. Uh, so the first thing, if you have a computer and have downloaded the FileZilla client, um, I apologize that it's a little bit small on the screen, uh, but FileZilla is a very useful tool to be able to upload files to a server in a visual interface. Um, so on here I have started FileZilla and if I want to connect to a server, so uh, many of you have accounts on Astro One, and Astro One is actually capable of hosting uh, websites right now. So if I want to add um, a server to FileZilla, I would click on this icon right below File, um, and I would say New Site, and I already have it, but I'll just add Astro One Two. Uh, I would put the host as Astro One dot PA Net dot U Toledo dot Edu. Uh, I would change this protocol to SFTP and then change the logon type to normal and enter my username and password. And then I can either hit OK or connect. If I hit OK, uh, if I want to connect to that server that I just uh, that I just added, I would just go into this drop down menu and click on that server and I would connect and I would be logged on. So the interface here on the left hand side, this is your local system file directory um, and this is the current folder that you're in. And this is the file directory listing of the server that you're logged into and it's um, the folder that you are currently in. So if I'm on my own computer, I'm in my desktop folder uh, and on Astro One, I'm within my own little folder. Within my folder, I have this file called public HTML. In public HTML, uh, if you don't have that folder, um, don't worry, uh, we'll get you set up with that. Um, but the public HTML would be where you would put your files on Astro One to make them visible to the world. So currently, I have just a, a simple web page called index.html and then a folder called images. And so to get to my website within Astro One, I would just go to my browser and I would open up a new tab. So I would type in astro1.panet.utilito.edu and then slash tilde and then my username. And so that's where your website sits. And this is just a very simple, basic website that I, I created today. And we're going to be going over most of the elements that I have within this particular website. Um, having your own personal website, not necessarily like this, um, but as a professional website is very useful for you as a student, uh, especially to get your name and your publications and maybe if you have data out there. Um, so, so I have a semi-professional website. Um, I'm still working on it, but it's uh, it has all the information that I need. It has a little bit about what I do here, um, a little bit of information about my research and research advisors. And within here, um, I have my CV, uh, publications. Um, also, I've done a little bit of styling so that if I'm reading on a small mobile device, uh, it's the website is still viewable and readable in a nice format. 
We won't necessarily get into how I made this look pretty um, with this workshop. We may touch it in the next workshop when I'm talking about content management systems. Um, but uh, there are many ways, uh, once you know a little bit about HTML, you can easily figure out how to make your website more functional and um, more available to external users. So let's get started on actually making a website. Since we have the tools to put um, data onto a computer, I'm just going to make a folder uh, anywhere on my computer. Here I'm just going to make a directory on my desktop, um, call it workshop, and I'm going to put all of my files from the workshop um, in this workshop folder and then I can transfer them over to my uh, directory on Astro One. So whenever you make a website, the home page is typically called index.html. Um, there's a history on why it's called that, I'm not going to get into that. But if you're ever making a home page for any website, or um, if I wanted to, within my directory, have a sub uh, directory on this server called, I don't know, research, uh, within research, so that if I could, if I want to go to, let's see. So if I just want to go to my URL on Astro One and type in research, it would actually go to the, the index.html page and I don't have to type uh, the specific file name uh, because when it's in that file folder, it's looking for an index page. Um, but the image link is broken and uh, that's not a problem here, but um, we can get into why that broke later. So how do I make a simple web page like this? Um, you can open up any text editor. Um, there are many text editors. We've From these workshops, we've gone over um, Emacs, uh, VI. Uh, there's, there's a lot of things out there. If you're using a Windows interface, I really like this program called Sight, S-C-I-T-E. Um, you can use Notepad. You can use Notepad++. Yeah, Cody? Uh, the Adam Open Source one just released their first stable version. Okay. And that supports all uh, syntax highlighting and a bunch of the extensions for Which everything. Which one was it? Adam? Oh. Basically like Sublime. Yeah. Open source. Yeah. That's so there, there's all sorts of things out there. So open up any, any of your favorite text editors and we will start making a simple HTML um, web page. Uh, so HTML is a semi-structured uh, language. Uh, it's a very simple language to pick up, um, but there are some little uh, just details that you want to be aware of and just keep track of as you are making an HTML website. So the first thing that I want to do is declare what kind of document I'm making. And I do that with a uh, bracket exclamation point and type out doc type and then space HTML and put an end bracket. Um, this is just declaring that this document type is HTML. And this particular document type tag is specific to HTML5, which is the most current version of HTML, uh, where they've added a few new bells and whistles. Uh, but they've actually simplified this doc type declaration. Um, before, it used to be some long string that was annoying. But doc type HTML is very simple. Uh, if you go into any website, um, so uh, a few very useful tools when you're making a website, which I'll go over before we go any further. Uh, if you go to any website, say Google, and you want you see something on a web page that is very interesting to you that you might want to incorporate into your your own website. Uh, there are tools within your browser to figure out what 
um, what that specifically is. So Google's probably a terrible example. Um, but here, we'll go to the workshop series website. So I want to see how how Joseph made this this look, how it, how it is. So I'd right click and you can say inspect element. And I think most browsers have some sort of functionality. Um, Chrome, Firefox, um, and Safari have this type of functionality. And I would do inspect element. And so on the right here, um, sometimes there's a window that comes at the bottom. Uh, this gives you the simple layout of the HTML page. So at the very top of the page, there's the doc type HTML declaration. Um, then there's a HTML opening tag, all sorts of things. And the cool thing when I hover over any of these uh, any of these items, it sort of highlights where this is showing me the information on the page. So Joseph has uh, a list declaration. This is how he put this on here. Um, and so this just gives me more information about what specifically is on this page, how it was made. So this is a very useful tool, um, especially if you're trying to replicate some sort of functionality on your own site. If it's done in HTML, uh, the, this will give you probably the easiest way of figuring out how they did it. Another useful tool, um, and probably the best place for people to begin learning about HTML or CSS and a few other languages is W3Schools. Uh, w3schools.com. Uh, you can go through tutorials. Uh, you can also, if you just really need to know how to do one specific thing, like insert a table into your HTML web, web page, uh, there's all sorts of information on this list. So if I need to know how to make a table and I need the syntax of how to make a table really quickly, and sometimes I forget the syntax. So going to this website and just clicking on tables uh, gives you some examples. You can try it yourself. It'll pop out uh, a window and you can modify the, the text over here and it will show you the result on the right. So W3Schools is a very useful um, tool for you to use. But let's get back to actually creating the web page. Okay, now I've declared what type of document it is. Now let's start actually coding something. So within an HTML document, you'll also you'll start off by de again declaring that it's an HTML document, uh, and you would start with an opening tag, and you always want to end with a closing tag. Um, in probably 95% of all HTML tags, it will have an associated closing tag. So uh, the structure of HTML is similar to XML, extensible markup language. Uh, so for every opening tag, you'll have a closing tag. And we'll go over, I think, two instances today where you don't actually have to have a closing tag. Um, but you always want to, when you're making a document, just add the closing tag when you make the opening tag, just so you don't forget it. Also, to keep keep yourself uh, more organized, if you have an opening and closing tag, anything that goes within that opening and closing tag, just tab over. Um, HTML files have a very useful structure. Um, you'll have a head and a body. So let's create opening head tags and opening closing body tags. And those, those sections of the HTML doc document are somewhat self-explanatory. All of the important things like references to external documents or the title of the page all go in the head. So the important information goes in the head and then all the meat and content go in the, within the body tags. Um, so one common thing that we add to the head tag is the title. So my first website. and end with a closing tag. Within the body, we want to add some sort of text. Um, there are many ways that you can do this. Uh, 
the simplest way is probably creating a paragraph tag or a, a P and then I'll end the paragraph tag. Um, here is some text. So all right, we have probably the most basic website that we can possibly make. Uh, let's see what it looks like. So I want to save this document. Um, I created the workshop folder. Um, let's call this index.html. And I'll always have the .html um, extension so that the computer knows how to read it. Let's save that. Uh, let's go into the folder and let's open this uh, with uh, an internet browser. And so here's my file. It's just on my computer and uh, the tab has the title of my first website and here is some text. That text is pretty small, um, but that is probably the most simple website you'll ever create. Uh, let's make this a little bit more useful. Um, say I want to make the text bigger. Well, one of the ways I can make the text bigger is by changing the, the tag from paragraph to a header tag. So there are multiple types of headers. Uh, this particular instance, I will put it as an H1. I think there's like H1 through 5 or uh, that are common, but you can probably declare other header numbers uh, and modify that later with CSS. So let's change the, um, the tag from paragraph to h1 and refresh the page and you see that the text got larger. Uh, if I change it to, or I can add uh, an h2 tag just to see what it does. Um, always end your tags, save that refresh the page, here's some text, and here's more text. The more text is smaller because that is a uh, subheader. So this is very useful if you want to stylize the, um, the text within your page. All right. Um, Let's see, uh, the next thing that I may want to do is add some images to my website. Uh, images is one of the, the, the more basic functions. Uh, so in my example, I declared uh, in a paragraph or a number three header that I like dogs. Uh, so let me add a picture of a dog. Um, so let's create an image tag, IMG. Uh, then we want to know where the image is located. Um, so image source equals, uh, well, if I want to refer to just a general picture of a dog, I can go on to Google and search for dog, go to Google Images, here's a nice dog. Uh, I can view the image and I can copy this URL. So image source is that. Um, make sure you put the, the source has uh, before the link, put a quote, uh, and after the link, put a quote. And then image the image tag is one of the only instances within HTML that does not need an ending tag. Uh, but to keep yourself um, straight about ending tags, uh, Anything that doesn't require an ending tag, put a slash before the ending bracket, um, just to make sure that you're you're ending this and it doesn't require an ending tag. Yeah. Not that it matters that much, I don't uh, care. How, what is the rule of thumb? Like, oh, this is a great picture. I want to tag it to my site. Do you have to worry about copyright or anything? Else? Yeah, you should definitely worry about copyright. Um, make sure. Yeah, I'm not worrying right now no, for this. No, no, no. I'm uh, just curious. But yes, be very careful if you have if there's a nice image. Say say you're an astronomer and you want to put an image on your site, uh, but the image was taken with Hubble and a bunch of people uh, took the picture. Um, luckily, I think all of the images 
through NASA are, as long as you attribute it to them, then you can use their images. Uh, there are lots of free image websites and repositories where you don't even need to say where you got it from, uh, but be very careful about posting images unless they are something that you took by yourself. Um, just be very careful about that and be aware. Um, but let's see what putting this picture on here is. So I save this. I will refresh my web page. And I have an enormous picture of a dog. I don't really want to see this enormous picture of the dog. Even though the dog is cute, um, it's taking up way too much space. So uh, let's, let's add within the image tag something about the image size. So let's do something like uh, width equals um, 200 pixels, px. Save that, refresh the page, and it got much, much smaller. So you can add width tags and height tags uh, to your HTML, and uh, you can change the, so if I did think this will work. Height equals 500 pixels. Refresh the page. That skewed the image. So you can change the height and width independently or if you just set one parameter, the other parameter will scale uh, at the same ratio. Another very important uh, tag you should always put on your images is an alt tag. Um, this is mostly important for um, if there are for disability purposes if people are using screen readers if there's an image on the the page uh, the screen reader needs to be able to interpret what that image is so um, if they're having the screen reader read the website out to them they want to know that there's a picture of a dog so this is a dog is my alt text so make sure you always put alternate text um, in some browsers, uh, you may be able to see what the alt text is by hovering over the image, um, but sometimes you won't be able to. So in this case, I'm not seeing the alt text, but just be very careful. Make sure you have alternate text for um, folks that need a screen reader. Huh? Um, this is so that if if somebody has a website, uh, there are some people that are visually impaired. Um, this is just to keep in with standards of those who have to have the website read out to them by the computer. So they want to know if there's an image of the dog so they don't miss any of the content on the page. Um, let's see. Uh, we could also add a caption to this image. Sometimes you might want captions. Uh, so let's put this oops, after the image tag. Um, we can put fig caption. This is a new tag within HTML5, um, but I can say uh, this is a dog. Save that, refresh the page, and we have this is a dog. It's really tiny, so let's let's see, uh, and it's very close to the picture. So if I wanted to add some space between the picture, um, I can add a break tag, br. Uh, this is also one of the only other instances within HTML that your uh, doesn't have an ending tag, and so I'll put a slash and then the end bracket in that case. So I'll save that. Uh, refresh the page, and it moved down a little bit. It's, you probably can't tell, so I'll add a bunch of break tags so that we can definitely tell, and it moved a lot of space. Eric? Yeah, curious, uh, you said there's a new tag in HTML5. Does it really know there's a picture of that tag? I mean, uh, the uh, operating system or the server. Does it know there's a picture near it so you could center it off that and give a picture or something? Or? That, that is a very good question. Um, 
I don't think it does. I don't think it knows. So you could probably just put a paragraph tag there and just yeah. be be fine. Uh, fig caption is new, so yeah, I don't know if they thought in depth of how what's the best way to associate this with the image that I put. Uh, one way. Yeah, so so that that's that's what we can get into a little bit later. I have a I have a couple more little things that I want to do that are basic, and then we'll get into things like like containers and stylizing with CSS. So I've added this caption to this image. Um, let's do just a couple more examples of what we can do to this page before stylizing it. So sometimes I want to add lists. If I want to have a bulleted list or a numbered list, there are two separate ways of doing that within HTML, pretty simple. Uh, you can have an ordered list, so you would start with an OL tag, and then let's just make an N tag here, OL. And then every element within this ordered list, ordered list just means it'll add numbers to the beginning. Uh, we will add an LI tag for list element. Uh, let's make sure we add an ending tag, and then um, this is the first element. Let's quickly add a second. And see what happens. All right, so I have list, first, and second. Uh, one thing that you can possibly do, let's let's try this just because the text is so small. Um, let's add this as an H1. Let's just put, make this a nested tag. Oops. Let's see if that makes the text bigger within here. Yeah, so that made the text a lot bigger. So we have an ordered list. Um, but also, we could make an unordered list. Let's just copy and paste to save a little bit of time. Uh, and unordered list, you just type ul instead of ol. But this, you have the same list element. So refresh that, and so we have another list. Uh, this is smaller text because I made it within an h2 tag. Uh, but you'll just see bullets instead of numbers. Uh, so that's how you create a simple list. Um, another item that you might want to make, say you're dealing with large sets of data that you want to make publicly available for somebody, uh, we might want to make a table. Um, table is... Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, then you'll get a broken link. So uh, let's see. So within my my home page, um, oops. There we go. So I have a picture of my dog here, uh, but I created the folder research. The reference to that image is no longer valid because I had what's called a relative link. So when I had this file in my main site, I was just referring down one folder into the images folder. Right now, this is within the folder research, which does not contain the images folder. So it can't actually find this image. So it comes up with a broken link. So that's what's going to happen. So that's why you need to be careful uh, making references to things, uh, especially relative links when you're copying and pasting. Yes. So if I wanted to make sure that that, that picture image would be there forever, um, I would save that image and put it in a folder and make a link to that with on, on my own server so that, that I know that it's there. So that's a very good question. Um, so sometimes when I make a website, uh, just to keep things organized, uh, I will have the main home page within the top level directory. So the index.html is in the, the top level directory. And maybe I put the, all the HTML files within this top level directory. Um, 
but I would also create a directory called images and put all of my images within that directory. Um, and then I would create a directory for called CSS and put any style sheets in there um, just to keep yourself organized. That is better. Yeah, it, it's, it's better to think about the organization when you're creating the website, not afterwards when you have a bunch of things and just don't know where, where things are and you have 10 pages with a thousand lines of code each and uh, you just can't go through and fix it, fix everything once everything is built. So it's better to think about the structure of your website earlier on uh, than have to change everything later. Yep. So uh, moving on to tables, uh, let's just create a simple table declaration and of course end the table tag. Uh, within the table, uh, I will want something like a, uh, I want a table row. Uh, let's end the table row tag. And then uh, I guess a column is indicated by uh, TD. And so I'll end that TD tag. Um, I'll just put my name and create another table row. Oops. And end everything, make sure everything is nice. I will save that and see what that actually did. Uh, not there. Very good. You guys are paying attention. <laughs> All right, so so down here, let let me actually. Oh, this is this is a good place to talk about comments. Uh, if in any code, if you're just trying to get something to work, uh, or something breaks, uh, you don't necessarily want to delete any of the text. You might just want to comment it out. So within HTML, if I want to just save some space on my page. Uh, you just make a declaration, uh, so within this tag, the bracket, exclamation point, and then two dashes. Uh, you'll notice that all of this text turned different color. Uh, let's end this quote, end this comment uh, over here um, with just a double dash. You don't have to worry about the exclamation point. Um, or if I wanted to just add a text comment, I would just do the same thing. Uh, this is a comment, and apparently I have caps lock on, um, but this would do the same thing. Uh, but if I just want to comment out some of this code, uh, I would just very simply put this, and let's see what it commented out. So now I've saved a little bit of space. Um, so I have a table, a uh, fairly simple table with just two, uh, two elements. Uh, let's add a little bit of information. You can put uh, some more uh, table columns, I guess. Uh, let's see. Cody. Let's see what that did. Refresh, and it added Cody over here. So this table doesn't look very functional, really. Um, I mean, it just has our names. You can't really tell that it's a table because it doesn't really have a border. Um, let's let's add a little bit of information. Uh, something relatively new uh, is a table header type tag, th. Uh, So table header, um, the standard for the table header just makes it bold and centered uh, within the table. And I apparently got that wrong uh, because the, the columns are wrong, but that's easy to fix. Um, you can either modify
this information so that's a little bit better um, the other things you can add uh, so those, those are sort of the basic elements. So now we want to talk a little bit about styling. Um, styling can be done within certain tags. So we had the image tag and we wanted to change the width and height. There are different parameters on uh, the image tag about what you can do. Uh, so just W3Schools, uh, if you scroll down, uh, it'll talk about a little bit about the syntax. Uh, the, the ways you can talk about width or height um, and somewhere near the bottom I think um, I guess it, you can talk about the HTML tag and it'll give a list of its attributes so these are all the properties that you can assign uh, to the image uh, you'll note in the description of some of these properties uh, you'll notice that the align tag is no longer supported in HTML5. More than likely though, your browser will display it um, as like a previous version of HTML, but there are more preferred methods uh, using uh, like style cascading style sheets um, and other properties to be able to modify the image tag. Uh, so you'll see a handful of these are not supported in HTML5, uh, but if you go into that property, my guess is that it might talk about the preferred method. So compatibility notes for image to align the middle use the CSS property. So HTML5 was, was probably built around integrating CSS as much as possible um, to be able to uh, modify things. And uh, so let's modify some properties. Um, let's. This is a good point to start talking about CSS cascading style sheets. Uh, it's called cascading style sheets because you can create this style sheet and apply it in many places. So there are three separate ways that you can apply CSS. There's inline, uh, which means that I have a table here. Let's say we want to expand the table to take up all of the width of the page. I would just type style within the tag equals and then put quotes. Oops. If my computer works. Style equals width and then colon 100%. And then I'd put a semicolon. The semicolon denotes that this is the the end of this particular property, uh, I could also add additional tags here if I wanted to, but they must be separated by a semicolon. So let's see what that did. And so it just expanded that table to take up more of the width. So that's an example of inline CSS, that I add the attribute to the tags itself. Another um, form that I can add is um, embedded, I think it's, in, I guess internal CSS. I can't, I can't quite remember the names, but uh, there's a way that you can put many, multiple CSS properties for uh, different types of tags within the head of the, um, of the HTML document. So I'm going to add a little bit of internal CSS. Uh, I will declare a style tag, and with that I will end, a, end the style tag. And so say I want to make change the, the background color. So I would, of the entire page. Uh, well, the entire page is the body, so I would just type body and then I'd add a squiggly bracket, and then on another line I would put an ending squiggly bracket. But within here, since this is part of the body attribute, uh, I want to add the property background color. Background dash color, um, colon, and then there are multiple ways that you can declare background color. Some of the standard colors, say blue, you can just type blue. Um, Another way you can add a color is if you know the hexadecimal code. So 
um, A through F, 0 through 9, if you know the color, the specific color that you want, and it's hexadecimal color, uh, which you can look up usually, uh, you can add the six number uh, code, and then always make sure that you end with a semicolon, because I can add more properties on additional lines to this uh, particular declaration. So I'll see what that did. Uh, refresh the page and it turned my website this horrible color. Uh, let's let's say I wanted to modify the the header tags. So um, H1, I want to for some reason change the color to the of the H1 tags to orange. Um, and let's do let's line all H1 tags center. So text uh, align colon uh, center semicolon and then end that tag squiggly brace save that uh, refresh and so that did something a little funky because it's a list uh, but it moved the text uh, of the list to the center of the page so this is sometimes you have to fight with the HTML so um, I don't know off the top of my head how I can actually align those numbers. Um, I think I have an idea, so let's see. Uh, that was the ordered list, so OL. Let's see if... Let's see if that works. And it didn't appear to work. So sometimes you have to fight with HTML to get it to do what you want. So I'm not going to spend time trying to figure that out, but um, that's a task if you if you need to figure that out. Um, if you want to center an image, uh, the one of the quicker ways that I found instead of doing the align center tag, which was very simple, but for some reason they got rid of that in HTML5. The easiest way that I found. Uh, is to, let's uncomment all of this stuff, is to do a, a thing like create a tag called figure. Let's make this sort of a, let's also put the caption within figure. And with CSS up at the top, I can do figure. Um, change margin property. I think this modifies the margins uh, in some way. Zero pixels, I think, top and bottom margins. And then uh, I think the second property changes the, the horizontal margins. Uh, change the display type to block. Um, and then I can, instead of having the height and width here, uh, let's get rid of this. I could either do inline CSS, so with a style tag, um, or I could just take uh, this, per this particular tag, the height of 200 pixels, and I will put that within um, <coughs> I guess I could either do it in figure or uh, image, but be very careful with this. If I had more than one image on here, it would make every single image uh, this height. So make sure I end that, get rid of this style tag, and let's see what that did. So it set the image there, and for some reason, it did not center the image. Ah, figure image. So I guess I could have kept this in here because it's only looking for this figure tab. There we go. So I've got a nice centered image. Uh, if I also want to do the same thing for the figure caption, I could either just do something for fig caption or I could do figure fig caption. Do you have something, Rick? Uh, yeah, you have a question? Oh, yeah. I was oh, going to yeah. ask, is, is there like a tag, like a center tag, or a open, like the Western sign, and then center, and then close it, and then? 
That is a that is a very good question. Um, I think they're they're used to yeah they're I think that is you can still do that, but it's a less preferred method. So I think that's one of the things that sort of went away um, in uh, HTML5. Um, another thing that, that's sort of going away, uh, you may have heard of div tags. Uh, I used to always just put things that I wanted centered within a, a div tag. I would say div uh, align center, and that would be an okay way. But with HTML5, I think they got rid of like some of those really simple things, like putting the center tag. Uh, div tags are really going away. Div tags aren't going away, oh. but the the align equal center thing oh, is yeah, yeah. Okay. is they want you to do it in CSS for some yeah. reason. They're just making things more complicated. I'd much prefer this little yeah. this little center tag, yeah. like that would make everybody's lives easier. But I don't I don't quite understand the reason for getting rid of that. But let's let's actually test that and see if it still works. So let's get rid of, well, we don't want to get rid of this, um, this text that I've written. Uh, so within CSS, there's a different way to comment things. And it's with a slash asterisk. And then the area that I want to end that is another asterisk slash. So it's just the, uh, the other different way in a different language uh, of commenting out a section. So I'm going to, let's see if the center tag works. Uh, if I can spell it right. styling so let me actually add in so the center tag apparently still works so uh, but I guess that's a less preferred method so we could actually try searching w3 schools So, um, yeah, it says not support in HTML5, but your browser will still render it because it can render all HTML, but it's not preferred. So it's up to you if you want to use it. Um, it just may or may not work fully across platforms, across all browsers. So that's another thing you have to be careful, careful about. Um, most browsers support the most recent, like two or three versions of HTML, um, but I would be careful using things like that. So very good question. All right, back to our style sheets. Um, let's say I wanted to have my website. Uh, we have our nice centered image, uh, but our table looks pretty bad still. Um, let's, let's fix that with a little bit of CSS. Um, figure caption to and get rid of the center tags. I think so. <laughs> All right, so uh, within this HTML file, uh, I want to modify the table, uh, the all of these properties at once. And you can do that within CSS, just add a comma between properties that you want everything in there to be the same. Um, so let's add a border. Uh, one pixel border, um, solid, and let's make it green. And see how terrible that looks. Uh, so we've added a border, um, so we can actually delineate where the properties of the table are. Um, let's actually make the table header a little bit different by adding its own property. Um, adding a background color of green and uh, the color tag will actually just change the color of the font. And 
so now I've added a little bit of styling to uh, the top, even though it looks terrible on here. Uh, that's just to show you an example of how you would change properties of this. Um, the other, another very useful thing that you can do is change properties of the text within uh, your file. So I would just do that by adding another um, tag. So let's make all paragraphs uh, uh, font, since we don't want all of the text on here to be like, I think it's Times New Roman maybe. Uh, let's say we want to add the font family Helvetica and then let's make the font size of 20. So all paragraph tags, wherever they are in the document, will have a different type font and a font size of 20. And I'm not sure I actually have any paragraph tags, so let's change that. And you'll notice that the text changed up here. Um, so this text is different. And I can do the same uh, if I want to change the h1 tag, or sorry, h1. I guess I'll just do the same thing, but slightly different. So the text in this list changes a little bit. So, um, so I have a bunch of internal CSS, but as you can see, all of this CSS is taking up a lot of room on my document. Uh, which is okay if you have like two or three things that you only want to modify within this particular page. But what if I wanted to apply the same properties, say I have like five or six web pages, uh, but I don't want to go in and put copy and paste all of this uh, CSS to the top. Well, what I can do is copy all of this, um, all of the CSS, uh, make a new file, just paste it in there, I'm not going to worry about formatting right now, but I'll save that as uh, within Workshop just to keep everything straight on my computer. I'll make a folder called CSS and call this style.css. Save that. Uh, now, um, I'm just going to comment this for right now. Uh, but you can probably delete it at this point. I'm just going to be safe right now. Um, but I want to be able to access that chunk of CSS without having to, to keep it all in this file. So I'm going to type within the head, uh, below the title maybe, uh, type link rel equals uh, rel, that's just telling it the type of uh, file that you're accessing. So I can have uh, link to like a, a JavaScript file and I just type JavaScript, but type equals, here's another way of saying that, slash CSS. These are, these things are not absolutely required. Um, I don't think maybe adding the rel equals style sheet is necessary, but the type declaration isn't quite necessary, but I like to keep it in there just for good measure. And then href uh, hyperlink reference. Uh, so that was in the folder called something workshop that was in CSS slash um, dot CSS. So this is a relative link because I know specifically where this file is within my my little file structure. Um, and I guess I don't have to add a closing tag, so I'm just going to put a slash for good measure. Save that. Um, re refresh this page. It's going to look exactly the same. Uh, so let me just change something to make sure that having this external style sheet uh, worked. Let's change this to blue and this to black. 
and refresh this page and you'll notice that the table has changed. So now all I have to do is modify this style.css page. So rarely when I see websites these days do I see um, sort of internal CSS in, within the header. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and delete that. What's much more common is if you just have to modify a single property of, of a single tag, um, you would do that within line, so within the tag, so add this little style thing to this image. Uh, but if you need to change lots of properties across lots of documents, or even just this one document, it's still good to just have an external CSS file um, to modify your text. So that's about all that I have for the basic, basic introduction to, um, to HTML and CSS. Uh, just for, for showing you how this will work, uh, if you have information on, yes, getting rid of all that stuff. Let's refresh this. So I want to upload it to a server. I would go into FileZilla and make sure that I log into uh, FileZilla with the properties that I saved earlier. Um, and then I can just copy this over to the directory. And so now I can go if it'll load. Maybe it won't. Oh, that's within research. Okay. Slash. Okay. So I now have everything is publicly available online if you go to this particular link. Are there any questions that anybody has? Yeah. Um, can you bring up your CSS? Yes. Document again? Yes. In the very top, do you like do the header first? No, um, for the CSS, I didn't stylize this, but um, you just put in your, your CSS just, uh, just as it is. Um, so you don't need a head. It's not like the HTML file where it has to have this HTML head and body type tags. CSS, you just put in the, the little chunk of code that you, that you need, because this is a style sheet. It doesn't care too much about uh, the structure. Does that have that body tag? No, no, no. Um, so I didn't, I didn't stylize this. Uh, if you're in Emacs, you can just highlight everything. Yeah, um, just to save time. Normally, I would just have every single tag be like this, uh, and maybe separate it by a space just so you can keep things ordered a little bit. Anything else? All right, so the next workshop, um, the one on Thursday, I'm going to be going over sort of content management systems. So instead of having to type out every single little detail about creating your website, there are lots of useful tools like uh, WordPress or Drupal um, that you can basically create your site and apply a template, and that'll that template will apply to all of your, your uh, web pages, uh, and then you can create new pages that will be all styled properly, and it's a whole lot easier to use a content management system uh, like WordPress to if you have lots of pages that you want on your web one website. WordPress is more known as sort of a, a blogging type software, but you can also use it to create a full website. Um, and I found that it's very useful and the simplest sort of tool uh, that you can use to create a website if you have if you're especially if you're uh, pressed for time but you also do when you have uh, when you access these templates you do have control to modify them so just knowing a little bit about HTML and CSS will allow you to modify that those templates that other people have created uh, to make your website a lot more useful to you and more personalized to you. So um, please come to that. If not, uh, I hope this has been recording. Uh, I think it has uh, this, the screen capture of everything that I've done today will be on our, um, our computing workshop website. 
which I sent out in the link for this workshop. Um, we'll probably send it out again, but all the videos from the previous workshops are also available um, for you guys to use. So if you don't have any other questions, uh, we're done for today. So, uh, yeah. So the one on Thursday, that starts at 1.30? Yeah, that one will start at 1.30. Assuming there's absolutely nothing in this room, I don't think there is. I'm not able to attend this. Is there a way uh, you'll have a video? Yeah, so um, right now I'm screen capturing this. We might also have a uh, video from the camera, but yeah, we'll definitely have that available um, sometime just sometime either later in the day, Thursday or, or Friday. So this particular lecture should be available in an hour or two on this website. All right. So I would like to propose a special thanks to you since my son, who just got his uh, scout assignment as webmaster. Oh, congratulations. He's working on Star and just finished first class. So Thanks. Uh, he, he could benefit. So, so if you have any specific questions, I'm more than happy. I've been doing this since high school. so. You look like a little bit younger than I was when, when I started, so you're in, you're in a good boat. Uh, being able to make websites uh, is a very useful skill to have. Um, you can basically, if you know how to program a basic website, you can go make 15 bucks an hour at some small uh, company just making websites for people. And especially if you know how to use content management systems, uh, you can go make 25 bucks. If you know databasing, Databasing is very key, and I wish I knew a lot more about databasing. But if you had database skills, you could go work for any company for 30 bucks an hour. So, uh, knowing how to program websites like might make you want to quit physics right now and and go make some decent money. But um, it's good that you're staying in science. <laughs>